And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Charlotte, North Carolina, the trucking capital of the world, with truck stop number six, Mr. Gene Tracy! Yeah! Well, howdy! And good evening, everybody. We're going to have another wild time tonight. Yeah, you can tell that. You can tell. I, I was talking to a to a couple of truck drivers out here the other day. They were talking about going into a truck stop up in Montana. Last winter, it's all snowy, and they asked the truck stop operator, said, what in the hell do y'all do up here all winter? You snowed in like this? He said, well, we hunt and fuck. Yeah, truck driver said, what do you hunt? He said, something to fuck. <laughs> Seems like, yeah. Yeah, he, hey, and, and he was stuck up there for several days. He asked the truck driver, he's, uh, the truck stop operator said, well, let me ask you, he said, do you have any broads up here? He said, no. He said, well, well what do you do for uh, enjoyment? He said, well, everybody fucks so long the Chinaman. He said, well, I don't go for that shit. <laughs> and he stayed around there two or three days. He said, say, you know, you were talking the other day about old Wong the Chinaman. He said, I'll tell you, I don't go for that shit. But just in case I did go for that shit, what would it cost? <laughs> he said, $22. said, $22, my God, that's awful expensive. You don't understand. said, I get... Gets ten. He said, well, what the hell do you guys get ten for? He said, well, we got to catch old Wong and hold him for you. Old Wong don't go for that shit either. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you, heard about the, you heard about the old whore that had been in this same old whorehouse for 50 years, had this great big fortune gathered, and she retired. And she wanted to fulfill her lifelong dream, and that was to marry a virgin man over 40. And she sent out feelers all over the world. And she finally found a guy down in Australia. The guy's 44 years old, never been to bed with a woman. And she wrote to him, and he agreed to marry her. And on their wedding night, she went in the bathroom to put on her nighty and came out, and he was standing stark naked in the middle of the room, and he'd taken the bed and the couch and the dresser and the chairs and the lamps and stacked all the furniture up in the corner. She said, what the hell's going on here? He said, well, that's true, love. No, I ain't never made love to a woman, but if it's anything like fucking a kangaroo, we're going to need all the goddamn space we can get, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, we, we heard about the truck driver's wife the other day. So her little baby boy had the hiccup so bad. She called the doctor said, what am I going to do? And the doctor said, well, said, do you have any little piece of blue ribbon? And she said, yes. He said, well, tie that little piece of blue ribbon on the little baby's Peter and he'll quit hiccuping. So she got the little blue ribbon and tied it on the little baby's Peter, and sure enough, he quit hiccuping. And about three nights later, her husband, this old truck driver, drove for United, drunker than hell, <laughs> come in, and he hit the sack, and he started that hiccuping so bad it was shaking the bed. And she got up and got that blue ribbon and tied on his Peter. And it slowed the hiccups down, but it didn't stop them altogether. So she got up to find another piece of blue, but she couldn't find a piece of blue ribbon. So she found a piece of red ribbon and tied that on his Peter, too. And sure enough, it cured his hiccups. And the next morning, he got up and went to the bathroom to take a piss. All hung over. And he reached down and grabbed it and seen that blue ribbon, that red ribbon. He said, God damn sport. 
I don't know where in hell we was at last night, but we sure as hell come in first and second, didn't we? I'll make it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heard about that ICC inspector? <laughs> ICC inspector took a goat home, told his wife, he said, honey, I got us a new pet. She said, a new pet? He said, yeah, I got us a new pet. I got us a goat. She said, well, where in the hell is the goat going to sleep? He said, well, he's going to sleep under the bed. His wife said, well, what the hell are we going to do about the smell? And ICC inspector said, well, let him get used to the son of a bitch like I did. You know what I mean. I'm damn right. Yeah, we heard about, yeah. We heard about this old truck driver up in Colorado. Went to Denver looking for a job. And they needed truck drivers bad at that trucking line. And he said, well, hey. He said, I need a job. And they said, well, you got to pass the test. He said, well, if and I pass the test, what time you want me and Leroy to show up for work in the morning? He said, Leroy. said, who the hell's Leroy? He said, well, Leroy, I'm a swamper. <laughs> yeah. said, me and Leroy have been together 17 years. He said, well, we don't hire swampers. He said, well, unless yeah, you hire Leroy as my swamp, I can't drive for you. Because me and Leroy have been together 17 years, and I can't go to work without Leroy. And they needed drivers so bad that this trucking company manager said, well, I'll tell you what, if you can pass the test, we'll even hire Leroy as your swamper. He said, now, the first part of your test is suppose you were driving one of our trucks coming down Pike's Peak and you doing about 30, 32 miles an hour and, and the airline ruptures and you got no brakes. And by God, that truck, by the time you hit the bottom, is leveled out at 140 miles an hour. You're coming to a two-lane bridge. There's another truck jack knifed across the bridge you got a 3,000 foot drop on each side quick what's the first thing you do so first thing I'd do is I'd wake up Leroy <laughs> so what the hell do you mean you'd wake up Leroy he said well me and Leroy been together for 17 years and Leroy ain't never seen no motherfucking wreck like we fixin' to have, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, you heard about that, heard about that, that driver for Wilson Meats? Truck driver, driver for Wilson Meat Company. And he had a hell of a route. Beautiful route. Nothing ever went wrong except this one old woman had this badass dog. She had a mean fucking dog. And every time he'd try to deliver meat to her house, this dog would run out and try to bite him. So he told her one day, he said, he was a hair lip boy, incidentally, told her one day, he said, Laney, then you're, you're just going to have to do something about that fucking dog. And there ain't no way in hell I can tolerate that dog trying to bite me like that. And she said, well, I'll tell you what, from now on, when you come by to deliver meat at my house, just don't come in the fence, throw it up on the porch. He said, oh, shit, we're going to have to do something. He said, huh? Three weeks, every time he'd come to her house, he'd just especially for you. Till he came by one day, had two pounds of bacon, started to throw up, up, up on her porch. And she came out, she said, oh, sir. He said, yes, ma'am. She said, sir, said, you don't have to throw the meat up on the porch. You can just bring it up to me now. Said, what? Let that goddamn dog get me? <laughs> she said, no, sir, you don't understand. Said, uh, said that, that dog is in a position now where he wouldn't harm anybody. The hair lip said, what's the matter, lady? Is he thick? She said, no. 
No, she said, what, what happened? Said, we, uh, we had him castrated. He's in castrated? What the hell is that? She said, well, in the language of the layman, said, we, we cut his nuts out. He didn't none them, lady. Said, that's awful nice of you. Said, but you sure went to a hell of a lot of trouble for nothing. Said, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, you shouldn't have cut his nuts out. You should have pulled his teeth. I was afraid he was going to bite me, not fuck me. You know what I mean. Yeah. I heard about the truck driver. Christmas time, got on the bus, and he had this armload of packages, and he was drunker than a fart. He was drunk as hell. And, and this old woman said, look at you. Said, terrible thing you are, drunk like this. Here, it's coming on Christmas time, and you're drunk. Said, I'm not such a bad guy. Couldn't you see it? He said, no, the truth. Said, you see this package over here? I just bought my kid a set of roller skates. Cost $87. And this package over here, I just bought my daughter a brand new evening gown. Cost $420. And you see this package here? I just bought my wife a new mink coat. Cost me $1,200. Lady, you know what I'm going to get for Christmas? Three white shirts and a piece of ass, and all four of them are going to be two sizes too big. I'll take it. That's right. Oh. That truck driver came home to his wife said, You know, honey, while you was gone, said, There's a damn burglar sneaked in here. Truck driver said, My God, did he get anything? She said, Hell yes, I thought it was you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Coming. Oh. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Heard about the truck driver up in Palmyra, Indiana. Stopped there at the tree truck stop. They went down the road just a little bit to a whorehouse. And he walked in. This truck driver was drunker than hell. And he walked up to the madam. He said, what does it cost here? She said, $75. He said, you're putting me on. She said, well, that'll cost an extra 20 <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me ask you, anybody here a truck driver? Right here. Huh? Let me ask you the truth. Would you rather have a sister in a whorehouse or a brother as an inspector at a way station? <laughs> Tell the truth. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I tell how he's voting. Yeah. Hey, and I, I, like those, I like those animal stories. You heard about the two greyhound dogs. Is out in the cotton patch chasing this third dog, and he was just running like a son of a bitch. These two dogs was chasing this third dog. She's about 40 feet ahead of him. Hot? God damn, it was hot. And they'd been running and chasing her for 45 minutes, and their ass was about to drag the ground. And one of them looked at the other and said, Ain't this a bitch? He said, it goddamn sure better be, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like those animal stories. You, you heard about the little mouse that was sitting at the bar. And this giraffe, this girl giraffe comes in and sits down about five stools from him. And the mouse told the bartender, said, hey, bartender, said, buy that giraffe a drink. And he did. And little mouse got down off his stool, went over and got up on the stool next to the giraffe, and they they sat there and talked for a few minutes. Finally, the giraffe and the mouse left together. And the next morning, about 9 o'clock, that little mouse come back into the same bar, and I mean his ass was dragging the ground. He could barely make it. 
set up at the bar, and the bartender came up and said, God damn, Mouse, said, you look like you've had it. And the Mouse said, had, had it? Had it? Who said, had it? God damn, man, said, between the fucking and kissing, I must have run 300 miles last night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, girls is funny, ain't they? Any southern girls here tonight? Sure not. You know the difference between northern girls and southern girls? Northern girls say, yes, you can. And you southern girls say, yes, you all can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Heard about the old trunk driver. Trunk driver came home and his wife, he's about half drunk. His wife said, what the hell are you coming in here half drunk for? <laughs> Heard about the, about the truck driver pulled into the truck stop where they sold beer. Sat there and just got drunker in a fart. He got up and walked out away from the truck stop, and he's wandering out over this open field, and, and he comes across a cemetery, and there's a brand new grave there that they're going to put somebody in tomorrow, and that poor son of bitch trips and falls in the grave. And there's about three inches of water in the bottom, and he's there shivering and freezing. And about 30 minutes later, here comes another truck driver out of the same truck stop, walking across the same cemetery, and he hears this voice, says, Help me, I'm cold. Help me, I'm cold. And he walked over to the grave, and he looked down, his first truck driver said, Help me, I'm cold. Yeah, you, you heard about the ICC inspector that, that asked this gear, gear jammer, asked his truck driver, he said, hey, did you sleep with my wife last night? Truck driver said, not a fucking wink. I want you to yeah. I'm damn right. That's right. We heard about the old truck driver went over to see his girlfriend, and they're sitting on the couch. He was a hair lip boy. They're sitting on a couch, and he had his arm around her, and they sitting there just smooching and loving. And all of a sudden, she got this terrible gas pain. I heard about him. He said, I wrote a new song. He said, Mr. Poe Laceman, I'd like to play it for you on the piano. And she walked up to the piano and sat down, and she played it. Bang! She hit a chord, and she let a fart. And she played up and down the keys again a little bit, and bang! She hit another chord, and she let another fart. And she quit and turned around and looked at him. She said, well, honey, how'd you like that song I wrote, The Storm? And he said, been, been God damn. Then that was beautiful. Then I'm a son of a bitch. I never heard a song like that. He said, sweetheart, let me ask you a question. Then what the hell do you call that song? She said, well, I named it The Storm. He said, I'm a son of a bitch. He said, that's the, most real, that's the most realistic song I ever heard in my life. He said, darling, do me a favor. He said, play that son of a bitch again. Only this time, leave out that part where the lightning strikes the shit house. Would you do that for me? Just... <laughs> yeah. About the truck driver driving along, and he sees his car pulled off to the side. Got a flat tire. And he gets out, and he walks up, and the, and the driver of the car is drunker than hell. 
And they asked the driver, he said, what the hell's going on? He said, I, I had a flat tire. He said, well, hell, I can tell that. I said, how'd you get a flat? He said, I run over a milk bottle. Bottle? God damn, he said, lie. This Mark. kid was hiding it up. said, I want you to know that I'm a native here of Texas, born and raised right here in Texas. My name's Brown, B-R-O-W-N. And my mama and daddy was both of them born and raised right here in Texas. And their name's Brown, B-R-O-W-N. By God, I'm a white man from the top of my head down to the tip of my toe. My name's Brown. B-R-O-W-N. The rabbi said, I'll tell you the truth, I'm from Jersey. My name's Cohen, C-O-H-N. My mother and father, they're from Jersey. Their name's Cohen, C-O-H-N. Just like you, I'm a white man from the top of my head to the tip of my toe. All except around my ass. That's Brown, B R O W N. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. About <laughs> three guys met up in heaven. One of them said, How'd you die? He said, Well, I died from pleurisy. He said, That's terrible. Second guy said, I died from tuberculosis. He said, That's terrible. Third guy said, I died from sinus. He said, no, wait a minute. He said, you don't mean sinus. You mean sinus. No, he said, God damn it, I mean sinus. He said, I was out with this truck driver's wife and her husband sinus. You know what I mean. That's what I died from. Yeah. About the guy saw his friend, and his friend said, Hello there, Roscoe. He said, Don't you ever, don't you ever in your life call me Roscoe again. Said, The next time you see me, you calls me Lucky. He said, Well, how come I got to call you Lucky? He said, Because yesterday I was walking down the street, and they was taking this piano up on a block and tackle, and the damn rope broke. And that piano fell and missed me by three inches. Next time you see me, you call me Lucky. So the next day, he's walking down the street again. He sees him and said, Hey, Lucky. He said, Wait a minute, man. Said, Don't you ever call me Lucky again. Said, The next time you see me, you call me Lucky Lucky. He said, Well, how come I got to call you Lucky Lucky? He said, because yesterday, I went in the bank. I was going to try to float a little loan, you know what I mean. And while I was in there, a bunch of damn bank robbers come in with machine guns, and they shot and killed every son of a bitch in that bank. But me, and they, the bullet touched me, said, next time you see me, call me Lucky Lucky. So about three weeks later, Walking down the street, he sees him again. He said, hey, Lucky, Lucky. He said, now, hold that shit. <laughs> said, don't you ever call me Lucky, Lucky again. The next time you see me, you calls me Lucky, Lucky, Lucky. <laughs> he said, well, God damn. How come I got to call you Lucky, Lucky, Lucky? He said, because last night, me and the old lady was getting a piece of ass on the couch in front of the fireplace. 
and there was a boiler explosion in the basement of this apartment house, and that chandelier fell and hit me in the ass, and they had to take 22 stitches across the back of my eyes. He said, well, I understand that. But how come that make you lucky, lucky, lucky? He said, man, if that motherfucking explosion had happened three minutes early, that chandelier to hit me right in the back of the head. Don't you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about this, about this, this guy that was in jail for being drunk, and they had him way down in the basement of the jail, where it's so dark you couldn't see nothing. And this circus had come through town, and a gorilla had escaped. And and the sheriff's department had captured this gorilla, and they forgot this guy was in the jail down, and they threw this gorilla in the same cell with him. And it was real dark, and he could just make out the outline. And this guy sitting on the floor. and knocked him 20 feet clear across the cell he hit the brick wall and fell to the floor he looked up he said motherfucker I know what you in here for he said you in here for murder and you is a guilty motherfucker <laughs> yeah yeah we heard about heard about the drunk truck driver they took down to the police station Truck driver was sitting in there and he said, What? And I heard the girl that called the police station and said, Miss Gentlemen from Charlotte, North Carolina. Miss Policeman said, There's a sex maniac loose in my house. I want you to come get him. First thing in the morning. <laughs> right on, yeah? We heard about the preacher that was arrested for incest. Sent out to the county farm. And he was out to the county farm the first day, and the warden told him, he said, now, preacher, we don't just sit on our ass around here at this county farm. He said, we work for a living. He said, we pick cotton. He said, and you got a certain amount of cotton you got to pick every day. You've got a quota. And if you don't get enough cotton, you in trouble. <laughs> So the first morning, the preacher's up in line, marching out of the barracks, and the guard asked him, said, Preacher, said, you reckon you're going to get your quota of cotton today? The preacher said, If in the Lord will it, I'm going to get my quota. Came in that night, and he was about 25 pounds shy. One of the guards took him out back and slapped him around a little bit. The next morning, they're marching out, and the guard asked him again, and said, Preacher, said, you reckon you're going to get your quota today? He said, if in the Lord willing, I'm going to get my quota. Come in that night, is a hundred pounds shy. And about six of them guards took him out behind the barracks, and I mean, they kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> God damn, they worked him over. They beat his ass up. Bastard could just barely drag in the ten, line. and my bartender gets ten. Marching out of the barracks, and the guard said, "Preacher, you reckon you're gonna get your quota of cotton today?" And the preacher said, "If ain't there enough motherfucking cotton out there, I gotta get my goddamn quota." I tell you that, yeah. They're all right. They're all right. Hey, you heard about that drunk truck driver? Somebody's rolled for Hennis. 
And this, this truck driver, drunker in hell, he's driving this truck the wrong way on a one-way street. That's the truth. And this policeman drove up to him and he said, where the hell are you going? Truck driver said, God damn fine, though, but I must be late. Everybody's already started home. I know that. Right on, yeah. Policeman said, didn't you see them arrows? He said, shit, I didn't even see the Indians. Yeah. Policeman said, you run that light back there. I said, didn't you see that red light? Hennis driver said, shit, I didn't see the whorehouse. I don't even know. The hell I'm doing. Hey, I heard about David drives for home lights. Old oh, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave was uh, talking to a friend of his. And they, they both, you know, cord wood. Dave drives a truck a little bit and he cords wood a little bit. But but uh, Dave drives for a home life primarily. But he was talking to a friend of his that cords wood for him. And his friend said, well, how many cord of wood are you getting a day now? David said, hell, I'm getting five, six cord a day. Said, how many you get? He said, shit, I can't get more than one or two. He said, well, hell, you, you're using the old-fashioned system. Said, what you want to do is get one of those home light hand saws. He said, sure enough. Said, yeah, get one of those hand saws. Said, hell, you could cord seven or eight cords of wood a day. So the guy went down and got one of those home light hand saws. David sees him. He said, how you doing now? He said, well, I'm up to full cord. He said, but I can't get seven, eight cord. He said, well, David said, well, God damn it, you're doing something wrong. He said, something's wrong with yourself. Take it back to the factory. He said, I believe I will. Said, that's what happened. He said, David, you Ages and hits the floater valve a couple of times and pulls that starter line. And the saw takes off, goes. <laughs> this guy jumped back and said, What that motherfucking noise? Yeah. You heard about the drunk trucker? It's, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this actually happened to a guy who lives up in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a well. He claims he's a truck driver. He pulls house trailers all over the country. His name is Cecil Jones. He was drunk in hell, staggering down the railroad track, and he looked over on one side, and he saw a leg laying over the long side of the railroad track, and said, God damn, that looks like old Charlie's leg. <laughs> Walked on about 100 yards, and he sees an arm laying on the other side of the road. He says, son of a <laughs> that looks like old Charlie's arm. Walked on another hundred yards and he sees a head laying there. He walked up to him and said, God damn, Charlie! Are you hurt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heard about Tyrone Rayburn. Tyrone Rayburn. He's a country western singer, went into the whorehouse, so damn drunk. He walked up to the madam and he said, what does it cost? She looked at him and she said, God damn, Ty, you've had it. He said, okay, who do I pay? Truck <laughs> driving for acres, driving for acres, truck line, got married on his wedding night. Getting him a little of that stuff, he said, honey, God damn, honey. He said, that thing is just as tight as a mouse's ear. Yeah. 
She said, honey, you mean like a little field mouse? He said, no, baby, like a hippopotamus. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard the definition of relative humidity? That's where you ask your brother to loan you $200 and he says, piss on you. <laughs> Here lies the bones of Screwy Dick. At birth he was blessed with a corkscrew prick. His life he spent in the feudal hunt to find the girl with a corkscrew cunt. Well, he finally found her, but then fell dead. That son of a bitch had a left-hand thread. <laughs> There. there was an old hermit named Dave Kept this dead whore in his cave Now he had to admit that it stunk up like shit But Christ think of the money he'd save 